Hello beautiful people, it's Bridget. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. In today's video, we are comparing all of the Jeffree Star palettes to figure out which one is right for you. Now, Alien launched today, so I don't have it in person, but I will be talking about that one as well. And I also have the previous four Jeffree Star palettes to review for you. I give a mini review and tell you what you might like about each one. If you're deciding on which one you want, or if you have one or two of these and want to add a new one to your collection, which one should you get? So without any further ado, let's jump into the video. As always, you guys, all makeup on this channel is cruelty free, and so is Jeffree Star Cosmetics, and these palettes are also vegan, so just letting you know about that. Now, let's talk about the releases. The first ever Jeffree Star Cosmetics palette is Beauty Color, which is right here. It looks something like this, and I feel like everybody's seen this before. The next one released after that was Androgyny, which is this one, and this is the color scheme for Androgyny. After that, we had Blood Sugar, which is this beautiful big old palette. And this is the color scheme for Blood Sugar. And then lastly, we have Thirsty Palette, which came out for the summer. And this is the color scheme for this one. You can still get this, so I'm still going to talk about it in today's video. And also going to talk about Alien, which looks like this, which I don't have yet, but I will be reviewing hopefully next week. So keep an eye out for that video as well. Now, these palettes are all very different. They have very different color schemes. Some colors in these palettes are... Like, they can go well together. I wanted to say that because I did use every single Jeffree Star palette for this eye look today. Um, some of you are like, okay, that's cool. And some of you guys are like, yeah, girl, we can tell that's too much. But let's get started talking about each palette. I did do this with the Frost, the, like, Liquid Frost, Skin Frost, Supreme Frost as well. So I'll leave that video linked up top in the description box for you. So if you want to find out which Jeffree Star highlighter is best for you, I'll leave the video down there. Now let's talk about palettes. Now the first Jeffree Star palette, Beauty Killer, is inspired by his music days, and we all know about that. I really like the format of the first palette because I like the long, it's very skinny, really easy to store, but it also isn't cheap feeling, so I like that. This is what the palette looks like up close. My most used shades out of this palette are China Whites, which is a bone white matte, and then Courtney, which is a beautiful transition shade. I've also dipped into a lot of Princess right here, which if you don't know the shade Princess, it's actually the same color as the Princess Cut Highlighter, so you can use a shade as a highlight as well if you're interested in that. I would definitely suggest this color scheme to someone who is bold and out there. I think out of all the palettes, this is the most, like, in-your-face colorful one. I don't think all of these colors go, to well, go well together, like, completely. I do think when I dip into this palette, sometimes I want to dip into another one, so I don't think this is for someone who doesn't have many palettes. I think if you have a ton of palettes, this is one you want to add to your collection. It makes sense. But I don't think it's a standalone palette because some of these colors you don't really want to mix with each other. Like there's not much to go with this gold other than like a brown or a black. So again, if you have other palettes in your collection, this is a good addition to your collection. But I don't think if you have just a couple palettes here and there, this is the one you should reach for. I do think the mattes in this palette are good, but I do have a little bit of kickback. I do find that the shimmers are absolutely beautiful. So let's swatch this one. And this has aged quite well. So this has been out for two or three years now and it ages really well. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of this black shade, Black Radiance. Personally, I don't use black shadow, but I don't find this to be... Let's swatch this one. I don't find this to be the most pigments or the most beautiful. I mean, that finger swatch is hella good. But apply with the brush, it can get a tiny bit patchy on the outer corner. But overall, great palette. And I do suggest it if you are interested in some fun stuff. But again, I don't think if you have just two or three palettes, this is the best choice for you. Overall, I would give the Beauty Killer palette a 6 out of 10 as far as quality, packaging, price, everything like that. I will give this 6 out of 10 stars. Next up is Androgyny, and full disclosure, this is my least favorite Jeffree Star palette. I was not even the biggest fan of it when it came out, but I do have it here, and this is what it looks like. Packaging is better than the Beauty Killer palette, which is just slick. I like this, like, scaled, like, grippy kind of feel to it. It's very beautiful, and I like that all the information is on the back as well. This one was just a blank on the back. Now, as far as the color scheme goes, I like the kind of cool pattern around the mirror. And then this is the packaging. I like that everything's still pink. It makes sense for the Jeffree Star brand. Everything's pink. Some of these colors in here I absolutely love, and some of them I don't really think perform that well. I did use these two shades for my eye look today because these were my least favorite when I reviewed the palette like a year and a half ago. I just didn't feel like they swatched or performed as like well as I wanted them to. I found them a little bit patchy, but they still they can get a little bit muddy i don't know if you can tell or not but they can get a little bit muddy they don't want to blend like they can blend into like a more ashier tone so i don't think these two shades are my favorite in the world but he has changed his formula since then and the expensive 
blue shimmer shade in the beauty killer palette is fantastic so i just don't like these two shades these matched on the bottom here just feel awfully dry to me but the ones on the top row i feel like are better i don't know why that is maybe it's just because these are darker formulation these just feel more dry but if you are into more nighttime colorful looks or you really like like instagram smoky eyes and stuff with a pop of color this is actually a really great palette the colors i've used the most out of this palette are the first three frosting is a beautiful highlight color a beautiful inner corner highlight color a beautiful lid color is stunning it's so soft and so lovely i would love to have a skin frost this color honestly it just it's not just a like golden color it has like a peach shift to it so it's beautiful this shade right here safe word it, I've dipped into pretty heavily as you can see it has like a big dent in there and that's because if you are pale like me this is a fantastic cool tone contour color like I like yeah sure it's a good transition eyeshadow it's good this is not as hard as the bottom row but I don't know it's just a fantastic contour color I used it today for my contour just because it's very cool very simple doesn't really I don't know it doesn't get muddy or anything I think it's a really good contour color I would love to get this in a big pan on its own please Jeffrey <laughs> this orange shade charm as well is fantastic quality it's one of my favorite shadows like orange shadows that I own it's just a great orange shadow swatches beautifully it's soft it's not as hard as the ones on the bottom row I think that maybe it's just a better formula for that one the shade deja vu which is a shimmer is absolutely beautiful I do find it kind of weird that there's only two shimmers in this palette like I definitely love mattes but since these are a little bit dry they do they're a little bit underwhelming to me, but I do love this palette overall, um, just for these top three colors mostly. I don't really use the bottom colors that much. Like, this one's fine too, this brown appears fine too, but it's definitely for someone who is in love with this color scheme and doesn't mind working a little harder for the colors, because they do show up. It's just, they blend a little bit funny, so if you're willing to put in the work for it, this one may be for you. Alright, so let's talk about the crown jewel of the beauty community, and this is the Blood Sugar Palettes. You guys, I don't even, I am still amazed that I got it like the first launch because it sold out in three minutes um this is the back of it has all the information and then here it is the only complaint let's honestly the only single complaint I have about this palette is that it's really bulky to store and it's a little hard to open like this is a huge palette like compared to the thinness of androgyny here like they're the same length so the length isn't an issue but this is just so big and bulky and then I can't really store it against other palettes because of these little clasps here. They kind of get in the way. But overall, beautiful packaging. Very unique. Feels like I'm opening a purse and this does get stuck a little bit when you're opening it. But it does get a little bit easier over time. This is the inside of the Blush Sugar palette. I love it very much. Um, yeah. It's it's the best Jeffree Star palette, hands down. Sorry about it. It's the best. I don't know, I haven't even had Alien yet, and I still think this one's the best, because honestly, who doesn't like this? Like, oh, we've had a million warm eyeshadow palettes. This is bomb, okay? <laughs> the quality is so good. Like, I have not heard anybody complaining about this palette, because there's nothing to complain about. The only thing I had to complain about is, like, one of my pans is crooked, and that's it. Like, the quality of these shimmers. Let's do a shimmer. Beautiful. Let's do a matte. Let's do this bright one beautiful they look good on every skin tone because in my review of it we did swatch it on a light and a dark skin tone that's what i like to do for our review videos and um fantastic i did a whole look like a whole week of looks using this palette when we first got it trying to show you like how diverse this was so we did like the whole top row is not warm it's just neutral colors and golds then we have pinks and we have purples and we have reds and we have like this shade which you can kind of make look orangey with this one it's beautiful. You can make peachy, purple, red, pink looks out of it. Even though some people just write it off as a really pretty warm tone palette, it is very diverse. My least favorite shade out of here is this weird gray because I can't get it to work the way I want it to. Other than that though, everything in here is gorgeous. Now overall, I would suggest Blood Sugar to everyone. I think it has something for everybody in here. It has light shades, it has darker shades, it has fun colors, it has neutral colors, and they're very easy and soft, so they're really easy to blend. I think if you're on an everyday basis, this is a palette you can reach into time and time again, even if you're scared of color, just because a lot of the peachy transition shades show up so pigmented, and they're so soft and easy to blend out, that if you're on the rush for work, or you're running out of time for the day, you can reach into this one and they'll blend themselves out really easily without much effort at all. And you can still get a really pretty look. So I definitely suggest this one to everybody, but I definitely suggest it to people who are running low on time and want like a one-size-fits-all kind of eyeshadow palette, you know, even though it is 
pretty big and bulky. It's great quality, and I think anyone can really get a good use out of it, even if you're not into crazy warm eyeshadows. You like pinks, you like neutrals, you like purples, you like reds. It's all here, even though that all sounds pretty warm, but you get the idea. So next up is Thirsty. Thirsty is the summer palette. This is looking like a little popsicle. I like the little droplets of water on it, if we can get the camera to maybe see it. Um, this is the color scheme of the palette. Now this does have a new formula for Jeffree. This has these glitter metallic shades. They're just really pretty glitters. We'll swatch one for you. Whoa, that was a lot crazier than I expected. Let's touch this one. Beautiful. Next one. Beautiful. Truth be told, I'm forcing myself to use this palette. I really, the color scheme, the fantastic formula. We did a review of this one as well, and then we also compared it to Manny's palette when it came out because people were saying they were similar and stuff. But this is a really great quality palette, and I think the mattes in here are like the least fallout. Like they have the least amount of fallout in the pan. So if you are one who hates fallout, you hate excess powder, this one is great for you because there is minimal fallout to it. They're very nicely pressed mattes where you can still get pigment off, but you don't have a bunch of kickback in the pan, which is great. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of the glitter shades just because I have a hooded lid and that stuff goes whoop, right real fast. Like it goes up in there. Um, they do transfer. They do last a really long time. They stay very, like, pigmented. They don't really have much fallout under your eyes. They're very nice metallics. I would kind of just prefer maybe three of these glitters were a shimmer, but that's my own personal preference. As far as the colors, I love the top ones. I've used this one a lot. I used this one today to set my lid, and I also use this in my little lower lash line crease area. I like the palette. I love the yellow in here. It's much more of a light sunflower yellow than a gold, so it is a little bit more unique as to what you see in normal yellow eyeshadows. Trust me, I love I, I love yellow eyeshadow. <laughs> I like these as well. There's minimal fallout with them. These two do take like a little bit of building up, but nothing bad. They're very gray. I actually really love this color because I feel like it's kind of unique. Like in the camera, it kind of just looks like a blue green, but it's kind of funky in real life. It definitely reminds me like I don't know, an adult beverage, maybe. <laughs> it's just a really great quality palette for someone who likes minimal fallout, who loves glitter. I think this is the best choice for you. It is very wearable. If you take these three colors out, I think most people are comfortable with this color scheme. So if you are, this is definitely a worth it for you. Now I'm going to scoot over. We're going to talk about the last palette, and this is the Alien palette. Now I cannot attest to the quality yet, but as far as the color scheme, who I think will be interested in this palette is someone who is definitely more of a night owl or someone who loves cool tone eyeshadows. Other than that though, this does look like a beautifully universal, get it, universe, aliens um, palette. I like the color scheme personally, but I do think it's very niche. Like, I like it because I don't have that many cool tone palettes and I, don't, I love color and um, I don't have many shadows that are like this. However, if you are not in love with the color scheme, I definitely suggest picking up one of the other palettes because I know this is very like, some people wanted neon crazy colors out of this palette, some people wanted something kind of different, but I like the color scheme personally. I think if you were into like nighttime fall looks, you like cool tones, you into color being like a little bit weird, you go to a lot of comic cons and stuff, this color scheme would match a lot of character makeups and best for you. Um, so I think this one's definitely just personal preference since I can't test to the quality and how they perform. I think just if you love it, you love it. That goes for any of these. If you like it, you like it, you know? But I do think this is a very good palette, but it is huge, has 3D eyes, and it's going to be very weird to store because it's just going to kind of be... It's going to be a hassle to store. Just like blood sugar, at least blood sugar is like a contained normal size and I can stack things on top of it. The Alien palette has 3D eyeballs, and I'm going to have to put it on top of whatever stack of palettes I use. But it's a great display piece too, so that's my thoughts on the Alien palette so far. Anyways, you guys, I hope I gave you a good breakdown in helping you decide on which Jeffree Star palette is best for you. Definitely, I would recommend Thirsty and Blood Sugar the most, I think, just because I feel like this is a very universal, but you can still get a pop of color, color scheme to it. And this is just perfect all the way around, like I can't say anything bad about it. I do think Beauty Killer is for a niche amount of people who would use these colors on a daily basis. I see a lot of people who bought this when it first launched and don't use it that much anymore. And then Androgyny is my least favorite, so that's 
why I'm not gonna recommend it to everybody else. But if you do like the dark color scheme or you were really into the subculture palette when it was announced but that was a flop, I would suggest this instead. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Let me know your favorite Jeffree Star palette or product in the comments section down below. I'd love to hear from you and I will see you guys in the next video.